Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's my honor to be here and to share with you about my work and uh, where I work and then what we're trying to achieve uh, uh, in the next few years, right? So, uh, actually, um, I'm very happy to come to the event and I see one of the main themes that uh, you guys have here is endless opportunity. And um, one of my stories, like when I first finished, uh, graduate from university and then um, I was looking for internship all around uh, Vietnam. And I'm coming from uh, Ho Chi Minh City, which is uh, quite central. Uh, but then, and then I go to Binh Dung to work. Right. And so a lot of people are asking me, why do you have to go into a different province to work? Why don't you work in uh, the city where it's also having a lot of uh, jobs and uh, multinational companies and everything like that? And then at the moment, um, I cannot even explain myself, right? But now as I move on, I got matured, then I know the reason for that answer is opportunity. And I see a lot of opportunity in Binh Dung. Uh, and then one thing that I'm sure that the uh, province has is they are very ambitious. Okay. So I'm not, today I'm gonna share with you about how ambitious they are, uh, what is Binh Dung, uh, why is it a very good opportunity uh, it's been for me, and I, I'm sure it will be for you too. So Binh Dung uh, is a province that is located right next to Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, the last uh, 20 years ago, it was uh, more focused on agri uh, agriculture and uh, handicraft products. Uh, but nowadays, it is one of the best industrial uh, region of Vietnam. As you can see here, they have 26 industrial parks and over 1,500 companies. And that is companies in industrial parks alone, uh, not talking about smaller companies around it. Um, the growth of GDP is at 9.15%, and we are a strong contributor for the GDP of the country. Uh, and then we are ranking number one for business choice of infrastructure also. So over the years, we can see that development of Binh Dung is uh, growing uh, together with Vietnam. And, okay. and uh, now, as we are in, uh, I'd say, quite successful with industrialization, so what's next, right? So after that, they have uh, decided to focus on the left lifestyle of the people and the healthcare. Because when you have happy people, then the people can contribute uh, to the region as well as they are happy. And so as we move on to the 2010s, uh, we focus on more on high tech and smart city focus. And in my next slides, I'll show you why they come with to that um, decision. So, in our, so this is the goal of Binh Dung as we move on over the years. Okay. Um, this is the, when we talk about sustainability, there's the three triple bottom line of sustainability, which is social, financial, and environmental. So in order to be sustainable, you have to be able to achieve all of these things. So in terms of social, they want to make sure that they create more and more jobs. And this is like better jobs for the people of Binh Dung. And um, one of the things I really like is, uh, they want to make sure that no one is left behind in the development of the regions. So what does that mean? So as the region making a lot of money, we also want our people to making more money and to have better living standards. Okay, better living standards here means like they have like a very environmental city. And we also make sure that they have, we don't have much heavy industry in the industrial parks to make sure that the air and the water is clean and everything like that. Uh, and in terms of financial, uh, we want to maintain to stay in the top five of FDI attraction and contributor um, for the country and then to have like growing GDP every year. Right? So uh, the Binh Dung government have sit down and um, working with uh, Becamex IDC to decide that they will start on uh, the smart city project. Okay? So why did they decide on Becamex IDC? So Becamex IDC is basically they established in 1988 and that's just the right time to ride with the industrialized wave of the country itself. And uh, as they move on, they have like a focus in many things. Right? So besides industrial development, they also do urban development, which is building housing. Um, and one of the very interesting and very successful projects of Becamex in terms of urban development is um, low-cost housing. So low-cost housing is there to serve the people who work in industrial parks, and they only cost about 5,000 US dollars 
up to I think the most is like twenty thousand US dollars, right? Or ten. So it's very cheap and very affordable for all of the workers in the industrial parts. Uh, in terms of healthcare and education, they have two hospitals now, and um, one K-12 system and one university, which is where I'm working at, and we're going to talk about that later. Transportation system, um, they have bus system, they build roads, and all things like that. Uh, production manufacturing, they have a tech company um, focusing on um, information technology and services, a few hotels and stuff. So you can see that Baker Mac is trying to do a lot of things. Right, and then because they're trying to do a lot of things, they want to make sure that uh, the smart city project is going well together with Binyung to focus on social economic development of the whole Binyung region. And um, the smart city is basically focused on four things, which is uh, people, technology, um, education, and basics. Right. Uh, so from the, I'm just going to focus on the business point of view. Okay. So what Minyoung wants to do is to become a competitive high-tech manufacturing region and attract relevant foreign investors. Right. And, so, and so because um, Becamex and uh, Minyoung is trying to do so many things, okay, in order to move on to that next stage, they need to, to have like, new ideas, new technology, and new environment. Right. And so Becamex, because they're doing so many things at the moment already, they cannot like, by themselves doing more things. Right. So they want to invite a company, they want to invite people with new ideas uh, to come and, and together with them to help build a smart city. And so because of that, we are really focusing on entrepreneurship at our university. Uh, but besides that, outside the university, we have to create a place um, where we have like, very good business climate uh, for startup and expand their, the SMEs that we're having. So one of the solutions for this is to have a university incubator, and that university incubator will be held in EIU. So what is EIU? So EIU is where I, I work at, is, uh, is, is Eastern International University. It is a modern international university in Binyung, and uh, we have uh, three majors, which is engineering, nursing, and business. And we decide on these three majors because we did a survey around the business community, and they say that that is the one that they want to focus the most. And so we decided to do that with the purpose of providing high qualified uh, human resources for, for uh, all of the industrial park around. And as um, the MOU uh, just happened just now, uh, I think you know, the director of the National, um, the National Devel of technology development, uh, they, he has played it, stated very clearly that we need to uh, infuse the sense of entrepreneurship and innovations to everybody. And then this is what the university is trying to do too. And that's why we are investing in the Becamex Business uh, Incubator, which I'm in charge of. And we also have a new project uh, of uh, EAU Fab Lab to support uh, small businesses around us. <coughs> So I just want to sum up a little bit. Uh, so because Becamex IDC, they want to reach out to people and to create a chance to giving them opportunity for their new ideas and their businesses, uh, they decide to um, have uh, EIU and Becamex Incubator as a place to reach out to the startups and the SMEs. One of the way EIU support SMEs, uh, besides the human resources, uh, we act as a hub for um, capstone projects, which is um, one small and medium enterprise, they have inquiries about their business or they have any issue with the business. It can be a module of a class where teacher and student together help that SME company to solve that particular problem of their own. Uh, because small companies, they don't have um, much resources to go out and to get consultants. So this is, would be one of the way that they can, can support them to, to solve the problem. Uh, and so we just started the Becamex uh, Business Incubator uh, last December. Uh, I've been working on this project for over a year. But as over here, you can see um, we do trying to create a space that help people to, um, to be more creativity and to be more innovative. 
So our value is to enrich the startup ecosystem. And uh, as you say, having an ecosystem is very important. Um, and then we start by building this ecosystem before we having like, too much ambitious. Um, because we know that we still have to start small in order to go, go big, right? So the BBI is, uh, is there to provide a platform for our entrepreneurs to gather and grow. Because when they share ideas, the idea is becoming better. So as you can see, this is a model of uh, the startup ecosystem. So this is uh, from this Babson professor, uh, Daniel Eisenberg. So this is, um, especially this is for startup ecosystem for growth entrepreneurship. And if you want to have a lot of startup and with high growth, which is they're going to grow big and go far, then you need to basically have all of these elements in your uh, ecosystem. And as uh, us, as an in incubator in university, we are able to tap on the network. So companies that come with us, they can use the network of uh, EIU, they can use the network of Becamex to attract more customers or to reach out to their potential customer. Uh, we have labor. Uh, we provide uh, good human resources for the companies. Um, we are an educational institu uh, institution where born a lot of um, uh, research projects and having like entrepreneurship training and all things like that. Uh, we have support and professions. Our staff are like have legal and uh, accounting background, and it's also because we have a lot of professors and lecturers in the business school, so they are able to give advice uh, to students when they need to. Infrastructure, um, we have incubate, uh, we have co-working space, um, we have energy, we have good telecommunication, and we are a non-governmental institution, so we have we. Um, have programs such as hackathons and business idea contests to infuse the sense of entrepreneurship inside the, inside the community. So as you can see here, by just having one incubator in uh, university, we basically fill half of the space of this ecosystem already. And all, all, all of the other um, will, will like gradually come or is already there by the, for example, policy is already there. We connect with policymakers. Uh, to make sure that our startups get access to all of the um, uh, initiative for startups. So because Minyung is still a very much an industrial place, so um, our first phase is just to trying to introduce the new startup supporting model into the community. Um, because all of us here, we work in startup, we are entrepreneurs, we understand what is an incubator. Uh, but when I go out and talk to uh, small companies in Binyung, sometimes they don't understand why do they need to work with an incubator. It's like, okay, we, we give you network, we uh, help you with training, we help you to find human resource. But they will ask me, why do you guys do all that, right? What do Begamax want from us? So the thing is, like, we have to start um, by like, creating trust with the community around us to go out and talk to them about why is an incubator important. And that's why we are doing uh, a lot of um, uh, events every month. And then we're having uh, business contests and things like that that the community can be a part of. So that they will gradually see why is it um, that we're here to, to, to help them. And second phase, we will focus on offering concentrated and advancing activities uh, for business development. What does this mean is that all of the acceleration program um, and all of the consultancy will come then. Uh, that doesn't mean that in the first phase we haven't done it yet. It's just like we do it um, just for our company and then it's more uh, concentrated to what they need. So some of the activities you can see here. Uh, first is the membership-based workspace and support program. So right now, uh, we are having about five or six companies. I think it's five, and we, we're signing with a new one. Um, so when they come in, uh, they tell us, OK, what do they want? They want to access with this uh, governmental uh, agency. We help them to access with that. They want to find more customer. We help them to find more customer. And so basically, right now, we cater to the needs of the, um, of the startups. The second point is my favorite one, which is expansion hub for international startups. I think you guys would be more interested in that too. Um, we, we've, we've been working with two Singaporean companies, uh, 
And as you know, Singapore startups, they always want to go global. Uh, so what they do is that when they first come to Vietnam, they want to understand about the market. Uh, they want to find human resources. So they reside inside our incubator for a while because um, they can get access with our students who speak uh, quite well in English. So, and then, um, they, but they also understand about the local market. Uh, so that's helped them to save costs when they move to a new market. Um, and also we provide them with uh, places to work, uh, office and everything like that. And I have been, so, so far I've seen like, it's a quite successful model. Some of our students uh, go on becoming one of their business unit manager uh, in a very short time. So I think it's really a fruitful uh, collaboration. Uh, another company right now, all of the people who work uh, in the office is EIU students and they work as interns. Right? So the boss only comes like once a month to make sure that everything goes well. And so we have monthly entrepreneurship events. We have networking party. Um, we have business idea contest, hackathon, which uh, uh, happens every year. And one of our newer projects is EIU Fab Lab. So EIU Fab Lab is a place when people can come and work on their prototype. And the place is really big, so they can bring like, all kinds of machines inside. Uh, we have 3D printing, 3D scanning, um, laser cutter. This is a place for lecturers and students just kind of like bounce off ideas together. And this is also a place to enable everybody to create a product of their own as they see fit. So, but then being uh, fairly new, we also have the challenge of our own too. So first is, uh, I've shared with you briefly about this. Uh, we're the first mover in the market. Uh, so as a first mover, you always have to take time to uh, kind of like educate your customer, which is letting them know why you're there, what kind of problem you're solving for them. We're also the first incubator in, uh, in Binh Duong too. So um, we also lack of the expertise, which is like startup expertise, to, to come and to be together with us to support startup. Um, also, access to investor is another thing. Because we're new, uh, investors uh, don't know about us too much yet. Uh, so we, we all go out and we have network with them. Uh, but then we're also looking forward to have more network with investors to have like seed funding for our startups. Uh, because our startups, uh, they're either right now, we have two student startup and two uh, lecturer startup. So they really need seed funding. <coughs> Also, the entrepreneurship culture is another thing. Right? It's hard to go out and tell people, oh, you have to take calculated risk, and you can do it. Right? So entrepreneurship culture is something that we are doing with our monthly program also. And so also with startup diversity. Um, right now, a lot of our startups is in the, like, the uh, robotic, mechanical engineering, and uh, tech field. But we're also looking forward to uh, more startups on like uh, biotech or healthcare industry because we do have a hospital that can enable them with that. So with that being said, uh, I hope that um, through this event I get to know more of uh, you guys and if we can be your, um, we can be a place for you to come in in Vietnam or if any of you uh, want to go to Vietnam and start your startup or to expand your startup, uh, please think about us. And um, I'm looking forward to talk more to all of you and uh, to meet more people at this event. Thank you.